Hi crafty people of the internet, it's been a while now since my last video, but I was busy working for you on a new album. This time it's in a pentagon shape and it has a lot of new layouts for you. But I'm also answering your questions about the camera page of the First Day in School album, which I'm linking here in the info card again. But enough talking for now, off we go! As already mentioned, the album is a pentagon and closed all around. Closure, spine and outer hinges are made out of brown quilted flannel. Back and front cover are decorated with a simple piece of design paper. I will show you the embellishments in more detail a little bit later. When the magnetic locks are opened, the side panels unfold like an explosion box and we can look at the first page. Actually, I always call it page zero because it's just the inside cover, but not an actual page. Here you can fold down two flaps to get a view on the base page. And here is a small die cut from the Blooming Collection by Arsis, under which a photo can be pushed. All the papers you see here are also from the same collection, which I especially like because of the gold foil accents. On the first real page, you can see three simple flaps held in place by a strip with a magnetic closure. There is plenty of room for photos here and also on the base page a photo can be tucked under a die cut again. The closing strip is punched and reinforced from the inside with a piece of foil. The photo mats in between the pages have an unusual look this time because of the overall shape of the album, but they fit perfectly into this pocket. On the next page you can see three weld pockets with small photo mats. This is a layout that I'm using over and over again because I'm loving this look of garment pockets. To make it easier to grab the photo mats I stuck buttons on the top edge. The flap combinations on the next page have their hinges just in the middle of the page instead of the edge. They are all held with a hidden magnetic closure to the flap below them and here again a photo mat in the side. On the next page I repeated the camera lens from the first day in school album. Many of you had a lot of questions about this and I will try to explain everything in the tutorial part after this showcase. Due to the pentagon shape the open flaps are looking like a curved star or flower, which I find particularly beautiful. On the base page I attached a self-adhesive half-pearl ornament. Also this lens is held together with a magnet in the butterfly. And here I tried something new on the next page. Here a separating zipper holds the two flaps together. Underneath I gave the many tag die cuts from the collection a new home in a pocket with a punched top edge. And of course there is the usual photo mat in between the pages. Because rectangular flaps wouldn't have looked that well on the outside edges of a pentagon, I used semicircles on the next page. The closure here is a small removable photo mat in the center which is once again held in place by a magnet. I haven't done this in years, so now it was time for a photo wheel. Here you can see five individual pictures, one after the other by turning the wheel. And again, the photo mat in between. And now, just for a change, something simple again. The two larger flaps are held by a flower die cut to the base page. And here you can see the wonderful gold foil effect again. But before you get bored, let's play around a little bit with some more flaps. Here the upper two are held by small flap closures. The lower part is a small folio that opens to the top and the bottom. All pages, flaps and photo mats are soon as usual with a zigzag stitch. This is not absolutely necessary, but in my eyes it gives the pages a special boost. On the next page we have a big tag in a pocket. But of course, that's not a simple pocket. It can be opened to the top and has another small pentagon shaped pocket with a small tag. 
But even this flap can be opened again and offer space for even more photos and other memories. So just a little bit closer so that you can see the next page a little bit better. Here the page has a window with a small pentagon pocket in the center. This is open on two edges so that we can pull out a small photo mat again. The back is closed so that a small photo can be put here too. Just a little gimmick but with a nice effect I guess. Underneath we have a simple page with a self-adhesive rhinestone ornament. And as always, there is something simple following a complex page. Here we have three flaps again, held together by a magnetic strip. And so, we are already on the last page. Here, the pocket closure is a velcro dot, holding together three photo mats below. And on the base page, a larger photo can be tucked under a die-cut piece again. Although this is the last page of this album, it has a small bonus. All four panels at the edges of the cover also have a pocket to unfold. Again, all the closures are magnetic. And for a consistent look, I have made all the pockets completely identical. And so that you do not have to turn the album when looking at them, the upper envelopes open outwards instead of inwards. Well, that's it, but I promise that we will have a final look at the embellishments on the outside. But first of all, let me close this thing. Basically, it's nothing special. I took a number of die cuts from the collection, as well as various small items and flowers that I had in my stash. And that's how it turned out at the end. And so, that's the end of the walkthrough of this unusual album. And if you were only interested in the final product, then this is the end. Many many thanks for watching and hope to see you soon. Ah, you are still there. Well, then you must be the ones that are interested in the making of. And of course, I'm showing you this in a second. If you would like to jump between the pages, then you can use the index that I set in the description box just below here. But now, have lots of fun. Measuring a pentagon is always a bit difficult, and so we will do it in a different way. We are taking an 8 by 8 inch sheet of paper and fold it in half. Then we are folding the left corners up and down, creating a small cross in the center. Next, the lower right corner comes exactly onto this point and then immediately back on the newly created fold again. Just turn around and fold the created triangle from the back to the front. Turn it over again and fold the top corner against the lower edge and press firmly. Turn again and cut off at the edge in the middle. And with this we have our pentagon for the design paper on our pages. For the actual base pages we do all that again with an 8.5 inch square of paper. By this, the design paper is always a little bit smaller than the cardstock base page. And now we are cutting each of these pentagons out of a piece of cardstock, because this will be our template, which I'm using to give you the measurements of all the other pieces. I'm using a piece of cardstock in a standard European size. But that doesn't matter, as I anyway have to cut that down. We will need a piece that has the size of the 8.5 inch pentagon. We are folding this piece so that we get a square double page. And the rest is simply cut off. Now I'm putting on the 8.5 inch template and scoring the top edges opposite the center fold, leaving an adhesive strap on the resulting lines and cutting off the rest. Now I'm folding them over and putting the template back in place. Cutting off all the edges and the double base page with two adhesive straps to close on the top is ready to go. And we will need six of these in total. 
As I said in the showcase, I'm using the Blooming Collection from Arsis, which comes with die cuts and letters. For the whole album, I used one 12 by 12 inch stack and one 8 by 8. And now I'm grabbing the bigger template again, as I will use this to show you how much you will have to take off the standard size for the smaller flaps. But watch out, the adhesive straps will always have to be left in addition, so do not cut off too much. The first page is pretty simple. All flaps are pasted at front and back. If you are not sewing the pages, please stick the papers down a little bit more firmly than I'm doing here. After the upper flap is sewn, I'm cutting back the threads and securing them with a small punched piece of paper. Then the adhesive strap is pushed under the paper of the next flap and then also sewn. And here again the same procedure before I'm sewing the next flap. And here too, the threads are secured and then the entire package of flaps is set onto the base page. Before sewing, I am preparing the strip for the closure, which is cut twice and then punched. I'm always using the foil of our children's toy packaging or from the packaging of my own crafting supplies. In any case, you want to use an adhesive that works for foil. I'm doing this with glossy accents here. Near the edge, I'm setting the magnet for the closure before gluing both parts together. I already scored the folds on the upper edge before, so I now only have to fold them over. Then I'm setting the counter magnet and off we go to the sewing machine. By the way, you will find a full list of all the supply I used as usual in the description box below. Wherever possible, I posted links where to get them, unless I got them in a local dollar store here. I'm now masking the seams inside, so that the seams of the photo mats will later not disrupt them when pushing and pulling them. The edge that will later go into the binding does not have to be masked. For the next page, we will need a standard size piece of cardstock with a quarter of an inch as adhesive strap on each of the edges. Next, I'm cutting three parallel slits of about 2 mm. It helps a lot if you are measuring and marking that beforehand. And now I'm gluing the design paper over that. Please note that the slits have to be well bordered with glue because otherwise the paper may detach here very quickly. After sewing, I'm first fixing the threads. Then I'm cutting the paper at the top edge of the slits. By that, I'm able to carefully put the paper around the bottom edge of the slits. Even if that's just very small, it's well enough to get a nice clean edge. Apologies, but this time I had real issues with the autofocus. Anyway, let's do that with all three slits and glue all the small strips down. Once that is done, I'm preparing the welds for the pockets. To do this, I'm taking a one and a quarter of an inch wide strip of design paper and fold it in half. Next, this is glued to a matching piece of cardstock. Actually, it's like wrapping a parcel. Thank you. 
Afterwards, the strip is pushed with the nice side down through the slit. Of course, I'm doing the same with all three of them and sewing very closely below each slit. And as always, I'm securing the threads from the inside. So that the tags in the pockets later do not rub against each other, I'm creating a simple pocket out of copy paper. To do this, I'm sliding the paper under the inner weld and folding it at the bottom of the page. About one inch above the slit, I'm cutting it off and also cutting back the sides. When gluing, you want to make sure that the paper always goes under the inner welds. In case there are still overlapping pieces, I'm simply cutting them off. And so there is a small bag for the tag. I'm doing absolutely the same for the upper pocket. The lower pocket doesn't need a bag. And so the whole thing is now glued to the back of the first page. I'm using liquid glue for all these adhesive straps to achieve a long-lasting result. As soon as everything is dry, I'm finally closing the double page on the upper two straps. Finally, the sides of the welds are glued down. For page 3, I'm using the template again. Starting from the size of a base page, I'm cutting two other flaps, one and two inches smaller. But be careful again. Both pieces need an adhesive strap on one edge. The magnet is set with roll adhesive and fixed with tape. I'm always using some liquid glue over the tape so that the paper holds well. And then it's sewn again. I'm again securing the threads and then marking the edge on the paper of the flap below. And then I'm cutting a small slit again. Here I'm inserting the adhesive flap and gluing it down well. When adhering the paper, you don't want to press it down too much because the counter magnet is still missing. I'm rubbing some roll adhesive tape together to build a glue dot. With that, I'm setting the magnet directly in its position. Afterwards, securing it with tape and liquid glue again. To avoid the magnets to interfere with each other, I'm slightly offsetting the magnet on the other flap, fixing the paper and sewing around it. And then I'm repeating this procedure again with the flap below.
and since here again a photo match shall go between the pages, I have to mask the seams too. And finally, the page many have been waiting for. It's the perfect page to recycle all the paper leftovers and you would rather do that as one of the last pages. Here I'm using a lid to divide each edge in half and drawing a curved line towards the center. When the parts are cut, I'm marking all of them not to get confused later. And as you can see, I already have a lot of leftovers here. Last time, many of you were not sure how to shape the paper for these parts. Actually, it's really easy. I'm copying one curved edge and the straight one to a scrap piece of paper. Then I'm putting the curved side back onto the cardstock piece, leaving a small frame. And then I'm marking the other side on the top and the bottom. Then I'm using the cardstock piece again to draw the curved line. And once again to make it really clear. And this is how it's done for all the pieces. Well, and the flip side? Well, <laughs> that's even easier. I'm now simply taking the already cut pieces and laying them upside down onto the paper to get a perfect mirror. And then of course, sewing. Ah, stop, I forgot the magnet. I'm gluing it down as usual on one of the pieces of the left side. And not to mess up everything after sewing, I'm rather taking a picture. After sewing, I'm adhering all the parts to the edges of the base page. And then I'm covering everything with design paper again. The counter magnet I'm already clipping onto his body on the other side, not to forget him later. He should go between the die cuts, which I'm now placing properly first. Once one part is done, I'm using the glue dot method again to transfer the correct position to the butterfly. Then I'm fixing it and adhering the back of the butterfly over it. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you the exact distance between the two parts here, because that depends on the width of your zipper. It definitely has to be a separable zipper, because otherwise it will be a little bit difficult. To get the zipper in a straight position, I'm using a metal ruler and then gluing one side down. The other side then is a little bit easier. 
Both pieces are now glued and stitched again, whereby at the same time the zipper is permanently attached to them. But now it's still too long. How we are going to fix that? Well, do you see these cramps here? They can be opened relatively easy with the tip of some scissors. It's a little bit of fuddling, but with some patience. Once they are out, I'm just putting them back in the right position. And when this is done on both sides, I'm closing the zipper and cutting off the ends. And then the piece can be adhered to the page. For the pocket inside, I'm using a piece of cardstock. How wide it is depends on your taste and the size of the edge of the punch you want to use. It's important, however, that you are first adhering the paper and then only sewing the top edge. Um, well, <laughs> if you are sewing. Well, and if you are sewing, remember to mask the seams again, because here the tags are going in and out as well. On the next page, I'm using semicircles whose diameter corresponds to the length of one edge of the pentagon. Just a small refresher in geometry, that equals twice the radius. Logically, we need five of these pieces. And here, just to show it again, I'm using a compass with half the length of one edge to create the circle. Then I'm cutting back the corners and adhering everything to the page. I'm placing a magnet directly in the center and then pasting the paper over and sewing it. Please forgive me that I forgot to film the small photo mat, but I'm sure you will manage to create one without instructions. For the following page, I'm using the smaller interior template, which is actually intended for the papers. The center is obtained by drawing lines from the middle of one edge up to the corner right above that. Then I'm piercing the compass in the center point and stretch it out to the outer edge. By this, the wheel will perfectly fit on the page. By drawing lines from the center of the wheel to the corners of the pentagon again, we are getting five cake pieces that will give an idea of how big the window should be. It must not be larger than one of the cake pieces. Next, I'm putting the paper over it, outlining the window and cutting it out. And now it's time to put everything together. First, the papers are adhered and sewn again. Then the seams are masked. And then I'm piercing a hole through the center point. I'm using a small batch pin here for help. It would also do as the actual attachment, but I only need it for sticking small photo mats in the right places. These will give an orientation on where to put the pictures later on.
Well then, that's how it will work later. But my intention is to have a little butterfly in the center. If it shall be possible to take the wheel apart for being able to attach the pictures later, we will need a special mechanism here. I'm using a brat for that and then covering it with a punched circle. By this, it will definitely not bother the photo mat inside the page. Next, I'm putting the wheel on top and flipping the wings of the brat. I'm now building a small pocket on both wings of the butterfly that will each hold one of the wings of the brat. So, this was one side and now the other. And after everything is dry, the butterfly can be slipped onto the two wings of the bread. This way it can be taken off again to easily attach the photos at a later point in time. By the way, this is also a favorite page of my daughter who desperately wanted to see her hands in the video. To help the wheel to be turned easily, I'm simply gluing two die cuts, which I already enforced a little bit with a double layer of cardstock. And here, just for a change, something simple again. The two flaps are one and two inches smaller than a base page. And again, I'm adhering the papers first, then sewing around it before I'm gluing it onto the next and then starting from scratch. However, before I'm adhering the base page, I first have to set the flower and the magnetic closure underneath. And before I'm closing this double page again, the seams are masked and the punched circle just for safety reasons as well. Although the next page has many parts, assembling is relatively easy. The lower part is folded twice before being cut to size. Afterwards, I'm working on the closing flaps with the same punch that I have already used throughout the album. And then the magnets are set again, the parts are pasted with design paper and then sewn.
After sewing, all parts are adhered as usual to the base page and the counter magnets are set. Finally, the paper on the base page is also sewn and off we go to the next page. Here I'm starting with the main part, which will end up being both flaps and pocket. Also here I'm setting the magnets and adhering the papers. If you've ever asked yourself why I'm always using tape runner for the papers, you will get the answer here. Just in case something goes wrong, the roll adhesive can be removed relatively easily within the first few minutes. And now the piece is sewn again. For the little pocket here we need a small pentagon which can be measured and cut taking the template as a guide. But again, please bear in mind that you will still need the adhesive straps in addition. And in this case on three edges of the little pentagon. Also this piece is sewn, masked and then put onto the flap. Next I'm gluing and sewing the base page and then the flap piece can be put on. Incidentally here I'm only masking the upper seam edge as the others are anyway covered with glue. For the next page we need a frame that has an adhesive strap on one side. And a second frame for the back side doesn't need any. Both frames are pasted with paper and sewn before I'm gluing a piece of foil in between them. Similar to the previous page, I'm now cutting two smaller pentagons. One of them forms the background, while the other one is cut to form a small frame. The frame needs three adhesive straps again, so that we can later push and pull the mini photo mat in and out. I'm placing the background right in the center behind the foil and marking the corners on the foil. This makes it much easier to find the right position again after applying the glue. Next I'm gluing the frame to the front of the foil so that it sits in the same position as the background. Now I'm adhering the whole frame to the base page and covering its adhesive strap with design paper. And the last double page again is a simple combination of three flaps that are held together with a magnetic strip.
the mechanism is the same as we already had on page 1 and 8. I'm only changing the position of the edges and the closure. Assembling is now already known to you. After the magnetic closure on the front flap is set, each flap is first glued and stitched before it's placed onto the next flap and the procedure starts from scratch. Let's go to the pages on the inside of the covers, which I like to call page 0 and 13. Page 0 is built by two simple flaps where I only work the edges with an edge punch. The setting of the magnets, as well as adhering the papers and sewing the flaps, remains as usual. On page 13 we need three equal sized flaps and again please don't forget the adhesive strap on the top. Since we have to hide the hinges of the inside panels, I left about one inch wide tabs on four sides of the base page. I'm putting the design paper onto the page just for orientation and then marking the position of the flaps one after the other. Next, I'm cutting the paper to slip in the adhesive tabs and gluing them to the back. Then the paper can be adhered to the page and here I'm covering the straps particularly well with glue. I worked the closing flap with another punch here, but that's a simple matter of taste. Since I'm working with a velcro dot here, I do not need to worry about any magnets. Finally, I'm sewing around the page and off we go to the cover. I'm using cardboard for that, which I'm measuring as shown. Of course, I need the whole thing twice, with a piece for the spine in between. The side panels have the same dimensions as the spine. And now all parts are connected with duct tape. The gap in between should always be twice as wide as the cardboard is thick. Then I'm wrapping the tape around the edges and covering the opposite side with another piece.
the two stripes in the gaps are then joined firmly together. When this is done with all parts, I'm covering the outside of the cover with the cardstock that I used for all the pages. Ultimately, it's not different to wrapping a parcel. Just take care to fold in the corners, wrap around the edge and adhere to the cardboard. The back cover and the panels are wrapped individually and the hinges are not covered at all. The later hinges are always half an inch wide with a spacing of three quarters of an inch in between. I'm folding all score lines and using double-sided tape to connect the hinges. After connecting them, the result should look like this and I only have to cut the edges diagonally to slip on the pages later. Next, I'm adhering the entire piece very well to the inside of the spine. To get a durable result, I basically use liquid glue. To cover the hinges on the outside, I'm quilting a piece of brown wool fabric and cutting the edges with the die I used throughout. For the closures, I'm using a magnet for a purse on each outside panel. Using a cutter turned out to be a little bit difficult here. And as I only need holes that are anyway covered with paper, I'm changing the tool and switch to my scissors. The magnets are then placed and fastened well on the back. The counterpart is attached to a matching strip of cloth. After adhering the design paper on the back, I'm covering the hinges with the pieces of fabric. When doing so, I'm first gluing one side and then the other side in folded condition. So I can be sure that there will be no tension on the folding later. Then I'm inserting the closing belts through a matching slot. I like the slot to be a little bit flattened on the inside so that the belt lies flat against the cardboard.
Inside, I'm cutting off the inner part of each belt to flatten it a little bit. And then I'm attaching it with liquid glue again. In order to get an even surface, I'm sticking some pieces of fun foam in between the belts. Well, and then the covering page can already be attached to it. To properly connect the edges with the cover, I'm again using some bull clips and leaving them on until everything is totally dry. Now I'm gluing the page on the back cover as well and hereby the extra tabs of the page now cover the inner side of the panel hinges. As soon as everything is dry, I'm covering the panels with the envelope-shaped flaps. so only the spine is missing. Here I like working with hot glue because this is simply more practical and faster. Step by step I'm adhering the cloth first on the back cover and then I'm folding this edge over and now fixing the other side. By this I will have enough fabric in between to avoid any tension. Oh, sorry again for the ongoing autofocus issues today. I'm adhering the middle part of the spine again with liquid glue before working again with the fast adhering hot glue on the other edge. And that only leaves the pages to be inserted. To better be safe than sorry, I like to use double-sided adhesive tape on the hinges to get an instant grip. And in addition to that, I'm using liquid glue in the page pocket for a permanent and long-lasting hold. And then I'm simply sliding on the pages. Well, and now it's up to you how to embellish your new album. Well, folks, and that's it for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, then please like, comment and share this video. And if this is your first time here at Color Your Life, 
then I would love to have you subscribe. And if you additionally click that little bell, you will be immediately notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. And if you like more inspiration, then I have here and here some other proposals for you. Just click on the vids to play them right away. Well, then there is nothing more to say than thank you so much for watching and hope to catch you next time again. Bye bye.